Hey, buying Bitcoin on a KYC or non-KYC exchange, wherever you buy it, but then, you know, securing it, hodling it in a secure, uh, the most secure manner so you don't lose anything, any keys, any passphrases, any, you know, maps or configurations. So, you know, the more complex it becomes, uh, the more you need to be, you know, uh, knowledgeable and you, you need to understand what you're doing, especially when it comes to multi-signature wallets. Uh, so I'm really happy to have uh, Thibaut Marichal, or in short, Thib, back on my show again. He's from Knox Custody, and he has uh, developed together, I'm not sure whether by himself or with his team, uh, the Dux Reserve. It's um, where uh, Dux Reserve uh, enables you to create watch-only wallets and multi-sig vaults, and you have full control of your hardware devices, and it's free and open source as well. And so you can already subscribe, uh, you know, to test the beta version as soon as it's released. So we're going to talk about, you know, uh, security, about uh, noobs, the average user, what 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 the average user needs to be careful about, and um, a lot of other, you know, aspects related to hodling Bitcoin, securing Bitcoin, whether as a single uh, wallet or multi-sig wallet. Um, and yeah, without further ado, this is my talk with Tibo Marichal. Let me know if you have any questions, please subscribe and follow me on Twitter, Cave on Davani, and subscribe to my YouTube channel and podcast platform. Thank you so much and hope you can enjoy this one. All right. Welcome to the show, to the Cave on Davani Connection Show. Tib, uh, thanks so much for your time and coming back on my show. Uh, it's been a long time since we, have, we haven't talked to one another, so... And we haven't actually seen one another since last, I don't know, uh, conference in, what was it, in Riga? How are you, man? Ber Berlin, yeah. The uh, LN conference, I think it was uh, 20, 2019. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. For October 2019. Yeah. While. Are you going to Miami? Because I wish I could, but I can't. I mean, we have a baby and it's difficult, you know, with all the madness of lockdown, we don't know what's coming, you know. Yeah, I, I want to go to Miami. Uh, the thing is, it requires a, a two weeks hop in uh, Mexico or Costa Rica or whatever, because from Europe, uh, inbound fly flights to the U.S. are still forbidden. So uh, yes, the plan is to go there, but it 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 is involved logistically speaking. Mm -hmm. But I really want to go. It seems like it's going to be a, a wild conference. I can't wait. All right. Well, listen. Uh, there's so many topics, uh, questions, and uh, exciting stuff that we want to talk about. First of all, you've been crushing it uh, with with your articles uh, some time ago. You know, so it's went pretty viral. You write, you, you're a pretty good writer, I've noticed. <laughs> I mean, maybe it takes some time till, till it matures, I guess, but uh, uh, how's it going with your writing? It's, yeah, yeah, it takes months sometimes to like take that article that, you know, I've had in draft mode for, yeah, for, for months and just decide to like write it. And it takes then, you know, an hour to write it all and then finally publish it. So it's a... Uh, it's a pretty weird, uh, pretty weird process for me. Uh, it's been a while though I haven't written. It really takes. Uh, it, it's always a great exercise, but it, it takes a lot of discipline. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's uh, sometimes and time also, and sometimes I just don't. Uh, I you know can't yeah. find uh, any of those. Yeah, and a really good quality, high quality, you know, article, a book, or whatever. It, I know it for myself. It takes time. You need to you know have it rest, mature, and then think about it. You know, and then <laughs> work on it again. So listen, I mean, you work at Knox Custody. People know you already, you know, uh, but maybe brief introduction. What's been going on with Knox Custody and now this this uh, beautiful new project that you have developed, uh, Duke's Reserve, if I'm uh, pronouncing correctly? Yeah, yeah, D Ducks Reserve. Nice. Um, yeah, so Knox, Knox Custody. Uh, I, uh, I'm still working at Knox Custody. It is, uh, it's been uh, growing, of course. Recently, as uh, I'm sure a lot of other Bitcoin companies, uh, you know, experienced the same uh, the same pattern. We're, you know, we're we're serving uh, a growing number of clients. We've had a growing uh, um, number and amount of BTC held in custody, and uh, also um, a rising amount of insurance capacity that we've been exercising to protect our customers against theft or loss. So it's been been quite a quite a nice ride recently it's uh, you know definitely the bull market territory is uh, is uh, is attracting uh, new participants uh, you know there are many more discussions now around uh, of course the sort of uh, 
corporate balance sheets and you know adding bitcoin to those uh it's been a uh, of course, now in hindsight, it looks obvious, but, uh, you know, it's funny because like a year and a half ago, it wasn't obvious to a lot of people, uh, not us at least. So, uh, so yeah, no, it's been a, it's been a good ride so far. Super bullish. Is that that the same with the, you know, putting Bitcoin on, 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 on your, you know, as a treasury on the balance sheets in France too, because you, you look at it in France, right? Is that how, well, like, what's the update? Is there an update? um in uh, so in france i haven't had uh, many i haven't had i have had one conversation with a french company who is looking to uh, to do this to add bitcoin to their corporate balance sheet they have to of course uh get you know board approval and it it it's sort of uh it is still seen as a as a speculative move it, it seems from the the last conversation i've had with them so from that angle yeah there was no uh, no real activity there i mean that i've seen um, but you know, of course, there is massive uh, activity, like as as we've seen with the the announcement from uh, Acker and and City, uh, right? Their their new uh, division, fully dedicated to uh, to uh, to to Bitcoin. So, um, however, in in Canada and the U.S., there's definitely more more appetite that we've seen uh, related to Knox directly. Um, there's still, I think, there's still a you know a lot of open questions around the, the playbook, how to actually operationalize. Uh, a sort of a Bitcoin standard for corporate balance sheet. Like it, you know, for administrators who are not in the space, it is still, um, there's still a bunch of open questions in terms of how to actually, you know, do this in a responsible manner. Uh, and so we've had, uh, we've had some pretty interesting conversations and it, I'm sure, you know, we're, uh, we're only a little blip in, uh, in all the, the, the conversations that are happening in that realm. Yeah, that was it. I'm really excited uh, to, to and thrilled to see how it's, how this is evolving. So um, yeah, let me let me also screen share a little bit for the YouTube viewers. Like, uh, can you can you you know go a little bit into this Docs Reserve? What, what, what was the primary objective? Or it seems to me like from your Twitter comments also it was sort of a personal ambition or desire to develop this or or to work on this. What, what's the purpose of of this Docs Reserve? Uh, a key manager sure yeah so um ducks uh really so this this product uh, was uh sort of has been in the works for for a few years um and a few attempts to sort of build uh, an experience around around essentially personal or consumer key management um and it really came from a yeah just a personal experience of myself and friends and family struggling to, uh, to upgrade their, their security um, and, and essentially get a good user experience when it comes to actual personal custody of your funds. Um, you know, of course, there are many different options out there, whether you look at, uh, you know, CASA, um, Unchained Capital, and then this, the standard hardware wallet providers, right? Trezor, Ledger, um, even Quill Card for, for more sophisticated users. But what uh, what I came to realize by personally experiencing it and speaking with other friends in the in particular Bitcoiners on on Twitter is that as you as you sort of hold your own key on on your hardware wallet and you sort of DCA for a few months or a few years and and your stash starts to grow um, at some point there is a level of of value that accrues on on that Bitcoin holding. And you realize that at some point you sort of, you know, go over a certain threshold of comfort and you realize that, yeah, you, you're actually holding a, a lot of Bitcoin on that single hoarder device and that you know that there is a better way with, uh, with multi-sig, for instance. Um, but the thing is, even if you know that that security model can be better, um, there is always, of course, the risk that you sort of miss a step and that you don't do things the right way. Exactly, especially and multisig. Yeah, good Bitcoiners. Exactly, and so good Bitcoiners, they sort of know that the you know, the biggest threat is themselves, and not necessarily uh, an, an external attacker. And so, personally, I've 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 had this experience of you know, I know that my current setup is not optimal. I know what's best. I know what is required for me to do it, but you know, I haven't taken the leap yet. 
why is that? And, you know, and also, am I the only one? And so by basically asking myself this question, I just spoke to a bunch of people and realized that, yeah, a lot of other people are stuck in that same uh, level of discomfort. And so that's why uh, we decided to, uh, to build ducks to, uh, to help us um, basically fix that problem for ourselves uh, and then offer it to others in a, in a sort of you know, free and open source way, which respects the, the Bitcoin ethos of, of you know, development in that space. Mm -hmm. uh, you, the description is uh, you know, on beta.darksreserve.com, so anybody can like, uh, subscribe to the early access. Um, it says create watch only wallets. Now, if we just stick to the watch only wallet, the, the, the watch only wallet I know, for example, from you know, Summarize Sent Sentinel or Sentinel, where you know you import all your X pubs, Z pubs, whatever is uh, uh, Y pubs, and then you can sort of have a total overview of every of all your funds listed as a watch only. Um, so uh, that's like, do you want to comment on this? Is there something specific to that? Like, yes. So essentially, um, with that desktop app you're able to import harder wallets and essentially detach the notion of, of this, the hardware device, which has the ability to sign on the wallet and, and the wallet itself, which allows you to you know, view the balances, create transactions, broadcast those transactions. However, the, the signing really happens with that specific hardware device that you've essentially linked to the interface, to the application. And so the Dux desktop app really is, is that abstraction layer. So it allows a user to connect a hardware device and then essentially let the user keep that hardware device in the secure place. And whenever they want to access their wallet, they can do so on, on the Dux desktop app without having to retrieve their, their hardware device. They can um, create transactions on that uh, interface. They can broadcast those transactions from that interface, but uh, all the signing will happen in tandem with the, uh, the hardware device. So in that case, the, our desktop app does not hold any private key. It only manages public keys together to create those wallets and vaults. And so, you know, the same logic applies between a simple wallet, which is only one key and a multi-sig vault, which is multiple keys. Right, so on one end it's going to be a single signature, and on the other end it's going to be a multiple signature model. And uh, what Dux is is doing is it's trying to help the user make a transition if they want to from a a, a single key model to a multiple key model um, without too many changes in the user experience. Uh, and so I think the, the critical element here is to help the user understand that this hardware device is nothing more than a transaction signer. It, it is nothing more than, you know, the pen you're gonna use on a, on a check to sign a transaction and that's it. You don't need that hardware device to look at your balance uh, and, and, or to deposit funds, right? And so, um, you know, our, our belief behind this product, our assumption is that it improves substantially the user experience because you don't have to pull out this highly sensitive hardware device anytime you want to do uh, deposits or view your balances on the wallet or vault. Um, and because that experience is consistent for both a wallet and a vault, uh, you're going to be much more inclined at some point if you believe it is the right thing for you to move to a, to a vault, which requires, of course, multiple hardware devices to sign transactions and, and therefore spend Bitcoin from. Oh, great. Yeah. I mean, I like the approach. I love your approach and your team, you know, uh, user experience, user interface. So uh, let me see. There was a question that comes popped in my mind is that, yeah, you know, as like Sentinel is, will, will there be like, a, like uh, if we just stick now to, to the uh, watch only wallet, will there be a mobile version of it on, for your mobile? Just, you know, to have a sort of a overview of, of all your funds. Yeah, mobile. We've uh, we've you know we've been talking about this amongst us. It is it is something we'd like to be doing. It's uh, it's not in the pipeline in the short term because uh, there are you know many different features that we could add on the desktop app to make it 
uh, of course, you know, very resilient and robust, but uh, featureful enough so that people find it interesting to use and valuable. Uh, but definitely, yeah, mobile is is going to be at some point uh, an interesting an interesting platform for us to build on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, we've been thinking of ways where you can, you know, scan some QR code that is displayed on the desktop app to instantly link all your wallets and vaults that exist on your desktop onto the mobile as watch only wallets. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, That's great. So that definitely is interesting. These are ideas that we have, um, but they're not implemented and they're far from being pushed to production. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, which wallets are, are already integrated? Like the, the main ones, like Bitbox, uh, um, a Coba vault, a Trezor, uh, and, and Cold Card, right? Is, are those? Already so for, for now, we do uh, we have Ledger, Trezor, and Cold Card. And for Cold Card, we have both the uh, USB uh, uh, access and the uh, air gap mode with uh, the micro SD card. Uh, and so for now, this is the coverage we have for hardware devices. Um, and sure, yeah, we plan on adding other ones, whether it's Kobo, uh, Bitbox, uh, and, uh, and a slew of others. Spectre DIY could be... Uh, Really interesting as well. So it's uh, it's going to be a matter of uh, of I would say um, you know user demand. What is the appetite for these uh, these different hardware devices and and how uh, and then how much work does it take us to uh, to um, implement them? Mm-hmm. And you're planning to like to integrate more wallets, uh, you know, to be compatible. The- well, I mean, uh, looking at other wallets, you know, there is Passport from uh, from Foundation Devices, which is interesting because it again, all, all these hardware devices use standard uh, PSBT, which is interesting for for multisig, of course, um, and also uh, uh, the uh, QR code based um, offline or air gap signing, which is really interesting. Um, so uh, we're going to be we're going to be working on that type of, of multi-sig user experience where the user never connects their hardware device to the, to the laptop. Yeah, you know, so essentially just signing via QR codes or, or micro SD cards. Um, and it, it is something that we want to, basically we really want to work on the, the main UX around the, the desktop app and then integrate um, different hardware devices which uh, help us meet the uh, the goal of the user experience. I, our goal is not to have you know 100% of hardware devices uh, included, uh, even though it you know it could be uh, basically this. The result could be that we end up trying to have 100% of those hardware devices uh, added, but it's more so on the how does a hardware device meet the user experience objective of the app. Um, and if it does, then, you know, will, how much priority do we, do we put on integrating this device? And some devices, because they have, they're built on the same standards or even the same code bases, like they're not going to add substantial amount of work. And also, you know, Bitcoin Core HWI, uh, which is that, that library of hardware wallet integration makes it really simple for us to, uh, to work around with. Yeah, let's uh, connect this titles a little bit to the full node because, uh, you know, I had recently some issues and I think any other average user noob would, I think, should know or be educated on um, it. Um, I mean, as long as I think one doesn't, you know, screw around with lightning or lightning channels and all that, you know, get all those gadgets that are, you know, to a certain degree, not really matured. And there's, you know, always a risk to lose those funds. And, I, you know, I'm, and I'm, I'm not really, uh, really fond of, or, or I don't have much knowledge about the not lightning channels, to be honest with you. So I use, for example, my note, full note, um, uh, just for, you know, Spectre and Samurai and Dojo. Yeah. Um, so, and somebody, I think commented on, on, uh, when you published, you know, that tweet, he said, why, why do I need, I mean, you are, you already uh, answered that, but, I think it was something like, why do I need uh, Docs Reserve or, or the key manager if I have Spectre and Sparrow and something like that? So yeah. do you want to comment on that? Like, Yeah, definitely. I mean, Spectre is uh, perhaps, uh, in my personal view, the, the best um, 
the best sort of wallet around Bitcoin Core and, and multi-sig coordinator um, that that is out there. It is super featureful. Um, it has you know everything that's needed for someone who really truly cares about sovereignty and even privacy to to have you know a good good best practices around uh, security. Um, the focus of Spectre is, I think, uh, in serving power users, technical users, tech-savvy users who really want to get those, those uh, sophisticated features. Um, for us, you know, we're, we're trying to make multi-sig a bit more accessible to, uh, to the common man. Um, and so the, the software is, is opinionated, meaning that this, the, this product that we've built is going to be guiding the user into one particular way of doing things, which may not please everybody. And so because of that opinionated uh, perspective that we've included in, in the development of that product, um, it has less features. It is going to be less sophisticated on the technology side of things, I would say, on the, the, you know, the, the, the options that you're going to have on, on that interface. Uh, but we believe that it sort of meets the needs of other uh, perhaps less technically savvy users or users who are perhaps afraid to, um, to construct bespoke multi-sig vaults without um, you know, shooting themselves in the foot. And so we're basically allowing those users to follow a, you know, a pretty well-guided path. And by following that path, uh, we, uh, the, the goal, of course, is that they they can't make mistakes that they would be making if they had the choice on the interface. And if you look at other alternatives, um, you know, you mentioned Sparrow Wallet. Like we've, by the way, we've looked at all these uh, these interfaces before, right? And then their code bases as well. Uh, and it is Sparrow Wallet as well. It's pretty. It's a great product, but it is designed for power users. Oops, sorry, it's a, it's a windy day today. Yeah, yeah, uh, and um, and yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Sparrow Wallet is this is the same in my opinion. Then uh, you look at Nunchuk, uh, is another great uh, multi sig coordinator, but it, it is pretty technical as well. Uh, Lily Wallet has done a a fantastic job of bringing that user experience and I think to a, a more uh, general um, audience that has that is less technically savvy. Um, and so I would say we're, we're more comparable to, uh, to uh, an interface like that. Um, and again, we have our you know, different ways of doing it. Um, for instance, like one particular thing that we decided to do is to uh, not allow users to add keys unless those keys that they add are it, it's part of a it's part of a vault or a wallet creation, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Whereas on on the other uh, products that I've mentioned, you're going to be able to add the key, so meaning connect your hardware device, and once it's connected and you have other devices that have been connected, uh, you're going to be able to take those devices and and put them into vaults. And create vaults or or create you know single key wallets, but I think this experience, while it's great because it allows optionality, it allows the user to be completely free to make any decision they want. Um, it's also um, it requires a stronger knowledge in terms of uh, of actually you know, of, of actual key management, and so the route we've taken is is the opposite. It's like well the intent of the user is to create a wallet or is to design a vault. And so we're going to ask them to tell us the intent. Okay. I want to create a wallet or I want to create a vault. And that vault is a two of three vault, two of three multi-sig vault. And following that will demand that they uh, connect their hardware devices so that we can extract the keys and then, you know, connect all the devices together and, and construct those, uh, those vaults. Um, and so, from a, from a UX standpoint, I think it's more, it's, it feels more intuitive. It feels like there's no difference between uh, creating a, a wallet and creating a vault. It's just that instead of connecting one hardware device for a wallet, you're going to be connecting three hardware devices for a vault. 
I see. So let let's clarify a little bit. You know, for for the average user, that so. Uh, because I'm familiar only with, with Spectre. So if someone has, uh, you know, a single and or multi-sig on, on Spectre, uh, they can, you know, download the, the JSON file or the PDF or whatever. C can they like upload that to Docs Reserve, uh, to the key manager and create sort of a, a duplicate of, of the single multi-sig wallet? I mean, just asking. You know, to clarify what, what is possible and not. No, no, no. It, 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 yeah, it's a great question. So for the, uh, the configuration file, which is the file that tells the, the software how the keys fit together in a, in a, in a multi-sig vault or how the you know, addresses are going to be derived from a, a single key, which is going to be for in the case of a, of a wallet, of a watch-only wallet, um, there are standards. Uh, there are no strict standards for now in terms of how to structure the configuration file. But we've uh, we've looked at the different like the ways the wallets do it, whether it's Blue Wallet, whether it's Spectre, whether it's Sparrow, and we sort of uh, crafted our configuration file to be uh, to be interoperable as much as possible. Uh, of course, I I believe right now there are differences in the. Uh, in the, the specifications. So uh, it, it isn't something we've tested yet, but uh, the goal would definitely be that a user creating a, a vault with, uh, with um, uh, ducks could be able to you know, move away from ducks and import the same uh, vault that they've created with the configuration file on a, on a Lily or on a, on a blue wallet. Uh, and here, uh, the, the the fundamental like design principle is to uh, is to make sure there's no vendor lock-in, right? Make sure that the user isn't stuck with us if they don't like the product anymore and they want to move away. Yeah, you know, a question I've been raising also because I'm going to have Ben Kaufman back on my show to continue our sort of educational episodes on single sig, multi sig on Spectre, and I'm I told you know I gave him I gave him a couple of ideas you know that would be great like to time lock, I mean, it doesn't really have to do with Dark Reserve, but like to time lock funds like for, for a specific time and just lock it, you know, uh, especially for, for your posterity, for your children. And what if, you know, something happens to me, get a heart attack or, you know, a truck runs over me. Uh, and, and uh, you know, and I think this, the, 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 this feeling of being comfortable and, and, you know, feeling relaxed that, you know, your, your kids or your family or what, whoever, you know, is your higher, uh, to to be able to uh, you know to access those funds, and you know there's just so many technical things that always arises afterwards. You know, as I as I said, you know, in the beginning, I had some issues, you know, with my drive on my node. Now it's repaired itself. But you know, if you're if you have a single multi sig wallet and you have, for example, on Spectre, and it's connected to your node, and all those questions like, do you need to back it up? How do you back it up? Do you need to back up at all? Like all these questions, and of course, you know, key management is 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 wonderful. You know, to especially to have like a overview, total overview of you know of your funds, whether it be you know a, a simple sig a single wallet or multi sig wallet. What, what's your take on that? Like on security, on t you know taking care of of your funds. Like what's going to happen? Like what what if it happens? Something happens to me. You know, how is how is my family gonna? going to access those funds are they going to be comfortable or do they need to you know to figure out things and yeah yeah this is a this is a a multi-billion dollar question right <laughs> this sort of a inheritance planning estate planning for for bitcoin um i think multi-sig you know definitely adds flexibility in there and you can you can construct uh, you can have ways where you're going to be having uh, you know, say an external agent like a lawyer or or a, or a notary or, or someone you trust to actually hold uh, some keys as part of your of your multi sig vault. And if if you uh, if you pass away and your keys your personal keys get to be inaccessible, you would be able to rely on on the service of that person to recover your funds. Um, I mean, this is only just one type of scenario that could be uh, put forward with multi-sig and, and you have companies like CASA uh, doing it, good services for 
for collaborative custody. Uh, I'm not sure they have a, an explicit inheritance planning type of product, but I could be wrong. Uh, don't quote me on this. Um, Uh, more hardware devices to secure and more seeds. So if you have a two of three, um, well, you're going to have to secure those three hardware devices and also secure their three distinct seed backups. So that already makes six different pieces of, of, you know, of physical things that you really need to secure. Uh, and then there's a seventh core piece of information, which is the configuration file, which the essentially tells yeah. mm -hmm. the software exactly how those devices fit together to, uh, to be able to access your funds. And so while that piece of information, the configuration file cannot cause a loss, if, if someone were to find it, uh, it is a pretty big privacy leak, meaning that it, it just tells anybody with access to that configuration file, it gives them access to your, the amount that are held in that, in that vault, as well as the entire transaction history. So from a security standpoint, there is, you know, there are quite a, you know, a lot of questions that a user should, should ask themselves in terms of how to best secure those, those hardware devices and those seed backups. Of course, you don't want to have them all at the same place because then it defeats the purpose of multi-sig. Ideally, the user is able to geographically distribute those pieces of, of, of information uh, across, you know, the, their office space, their, their, their house, their, you know, bank vaults or any other type of trusted um, places where they could actually store those, those, uh, info, those pieces of information securely. Um, and yeah, I mean, again, when a user is going to create a vault with, uh, whether it's with Spectre or with uh, Ducks or, or Lily, um, it is assumed that the hardware devices are initialized, right? So from a, from a security standpoint, there is also, there, there are other concerns, right? In the sort of, in that procedure, when the user actually um, initializes the hardware device and, and back, back it up, back up the seed, right? Because you want to make sure the seed is properly backed up. You want to make sure the backups are tested uh, and, uh, and functional and, and you know, well-stored uh, before actually constructing a vault and thinking about using that key in the context of a wallet or a vault. And so I think all these, all these security concerns are so far, uh, they've been abstracted away from, from products like Ducks. And this is something we'd like to be able to do is, is really holding the hand of the user, not only in the creation of a, of a, of a wallet with us or, or a vault, but more so before when you initialize your devices and when you back them up, uh, and when you then, you know, securely store those backups. Yeah, and, and you made a good point and, at the beginning. Know, these are, again, yeah. These are all. Mm -hmm. yeah, you mentioned in the beginning, you know, that the, you're yourself, your, your, your worst enemy or well, not enemy, but like worst, uh, like point of failure usually. And, and I would advise, I mean, anyone, you know, who is not familiar with multisig or how to do this exactly, you know, how to keep all those things secure, whatever it is, that map of the multisig, you know, all the seeds and, 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 and the configuration, um, you know, I would, I would advise, you know, just stick to a single wallet until that time being. hundred percent. There's a, there's a learning curve and, uh, you know, it's not because we're, we're building this, uh, this multisig product that we're going to sing the, the, the multisig ghost bell. Um, I think users have to go through their own journey and, uh, and, you know, multi-sig is far from being the solution to everybody. I think most users are, you know, better off and, uh, and just manage that securely, uh, understand, get comfortable with that type of setup, understand how to properly, you know, recover the, this harder wallet if it gets lost using backups or an operational, uh, procedure, then you can finally decide to, you know, slowly upgrade to a, to a multi-sig uh, vault and, and test it out in parallel and, and get comfortable with that new setup, test out the recovery procedures, test out the, uh, the different ways to, uh, to sign using your different hardware devices. And, and once you're, you're comfortable, you know, slowly uh, move funds uh, to that new vault, but it, it takes time. You, you absolutely don't want to rush things out and, uh, 
and and do mistakes because uh, that's how most uh, most people get wrecked is by you know do locking themselves out of their own Bitcoin. Yeah, it's so super important what you just said, you know, because it's an educational process, and uh, you know, and I think any any average user or noob should just stick to that what he what he or she understands. Uh, you know, would it be mobile wallet, single wallet, or you know, uh, just a simple hardware wallet, and and you know, until it mature, because you know, if you feel you know, it's just like if you. You know, if people get wrecked, you know, and uh, it, it's it's really, I mean, yeah, it's it's a tragic thing then, you know, because what do you do then, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. You have no recourse, you know? Yeah. And so this is really the, uh, you know, the main, one of the main goals behind this product also is uh, helping users learn, learn how, uh, how, you know, hardware wallets are, what are the trade-offs in different models? Um, you know, when a user should perhaps think of doing a two of three multi-sig versus a three of five, uh, and why a three of three multi-sig is, is a very dangerous type of, of quorum. Um, so this is where, again, we're going to be opinionated in our views and, and perhaps provide some recommendations to users. Of course, you know, telling them that ultimately the, the choice and, and sort of responsibility lies in, in their own hands. Like we want to, You know, when we say we, we celebrate uh, individual sovereignty is that this is what we mean, right? It's we're providing software to manage your keys, but ultimately you are the one in charge. You are the one in full control of your hardware devices and, uh, and you are the one making the decision uh, whether you want to use one particular setup versus the other one. We can tell you why we think one could be better than the other for you, but ultimately uh, it's, it's your call. Yeah. And you know, uh, you know, it's people like you or Ben Kaufman or the you know the team of Spectre, you know, or Dark Reserve that that really look to w what is really needed, you know, like in terms of user experience, user interface. Like, how can I make the process easier? Uh, and I know that Ben Kaufman, for example, is integrating or is about to integrate, you know, the whole Tor or the Bitcoin Core. So it's like like a push on a button, so people don't need to do these things separately, and everything is like you know integrated into one package. And I think this is a much smoother, uh, you know, process for people, especially for noobs. So, um, Tib, thank you so much. Um, um, what, let's just wrap this up. Uh, do you have any other, like, is there uh, anything on the roadmap or uh, where people can follow you? Yeah, definitely. Look, we're, uh, we're about to ship this beta. Uh, we, uh, we announced it uh, yesterday. Got a, a lot of really positive feedback. It was, uh, it was awesome to see that from, uh, from uh, Bitcoiners on Twitter. So, uh, yeah, if people are interested to uh, test it out, it's going to be a beta release. So, you know, only to be used with uh, small amounts of Bitcoin if you're using it on mainnet, uh, but you can also use it on testnet. Um, so yeah, if you have a, you know, a ledger, a treasure or a call card and you want to experience with uh, watch only wallets or multi-sig vaults, um, sign up on uh, on the uh, ducksreserve.com uh, site or join our telegram if you don't want to share your email with us and we'll uh, we'll share the uh, beta release uh, pretty soon awesome so uh, looking forward yeah to our next talk um uh, thank you so much have fun hope we, we can you know meet meet each other in the very near future <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely thank you kevin bye Tib. have a good one okay that was an awesome talk very informative and educational with Ibo marichal works at with Knox Custody and now Docs Reserve. Um, yeah, make sure it's always, you know, security, all those steps that are might be, you know, taken granted for more advanced users or techies, you know, or really experienced users. Um, I would just stick to that, what you understand uh, when it comes to security, to privacy, securing your, especially your private keys, your seed, and, um, you know, ask around, go into Telegram groups, uh, You know, whatever you're using, whether it's Spectre or my node or full node or whatever it is, but just ask around and, you know, do you need to back it up, back up if anything? And um, yeah, so I find it really amazing what, you know, what kind of things are being developed, what kind of products and services, especially with the emphasis on, on user experience and user interface. So let me know your questions and comments. Please follow me on YouTube uh, and on my podcast platforms and on Twitter at Kevin Davani. Make sure you follow Thibaut Marachal or Tib and uh, on Twitter and sign up for the better re release of Dux Reserve on the Key Manager. Thanks so much again and stay safe. Uh, I'll see you on the next episode, the Kevin Davani Connection.